Welcome to our tutorial about Windows hardware requirements. In this lesson, we're going to review the specific hardware requirements you need to run Cubase on a Windows platform. You do need a bit more computer power to run Cubase 5 than you did Cubase 4, and significantly more than you did to run Cubase 3. To use Cubase, your computer must meet the following minimum requirements. You need to have as your operating system Windows XP, Vista, or Windows 7. You need a 2 GHz processor with a dual core processor recommended. At least 1024 MB of RAM, and most computers come with much more than this these days. Windows DirectX compatible audio hardware or ASIO compatible audio hardware for low latency performance. Latency refers to how fast your equipment communicates and records. We're going to talk more about this later on. A display resolution of 1280 by 800 pixels minimum on your monitor, and otherwise you won't be able to see the full Cubase screen. At least 4 GB of free hard disk space, and generally you'd never want your disk to have only 4 GB free or you'd have increased latency during recording, and possibly some freezing and distortion. The Steinberg key and a USB component connector in order to activate and launch the software. Take good care of your key. Steinberg will only replace a lost key license one time. You'll need a DVD ROM drive for installation. You need an internet connection for the license activation. That doesn't mean that your Cubase installation has to be on the terminal where you've got internet, but in order to be able to launch Cubase, you will have to activate it via the internet. These requirements cover the 32-bit version of the Cubase installation. There's a 64-bit version of Cubase 5, and that has some additional requirements. You can read about those in your Cubase documentation. At the Steinberg website, under Support, DAW Components, you can find a lot of information about how to set up your computer system for working with a digital audio workstation. You can also make sure that your audio hardware is compatible with Cubase 5. Here's a list of Cubase compatible and tested hardware. And let's close the Steinberg website. If you're using Windows, you must defragment your hard drive regularly. Defragmentation reorganizes the data on your hard drive to optimize performance. It's especially important when you work with large files like audio and video that you defragment regularly. If you're installing Cubase for the first time, I suggest you defragment your hard drive before you get started. You can access the defragmenter by going to the Windows Control Panel. In Vista, which is what I'm using, you defragment by going to Performance, Information and Tools, Advanced Tools, Open Disk Defragmenter. And you may also have some third-party software that does this. Now let's take a moment to talk about your audio hardware. By audio hardware, I mean your internal or external sound card. It needs to support stereo recording, so you'll need at least two inputs that you can use at the same time. It should support at least 16-bit recording, and that's the minimum for CD quality. It should support a 44.1 kHz sample rate, also the minimum for CD quality. And it should come with an ASIO driver or a DirectX compatible driver. With Vista and Windows 7, you can use the generic low latency ASIO driver that comes with the platform. This driver lets Cubase talk to and control the audio hardware. You won't be able to record without this. Professional sound cards come with ASIO drivers written especially for the card that let it communicate with Cubase. By the way, ASIO stands for Audio Stream Input and Output. And this is a technology Steinberg developed to synchronize communication between the inputs, the card, the computer, Cubase, the outputs, and to do this with the minimum amount of delay and error. It's definitely better if your sound card comes with its own ASIO driver. This definitely improves your computer's performance. A driver, by the way, is a piece of software that lets a program communicate with a certain piece of hardware. Your audio driver is what lets Cubase use your sound card. If your sound card only communicates via DirectX, that's okay. Cubase can support this. DirectX is a Microsoft driver for handling multimedia data in Windows. 
If your audio interface doesn't come with the DirectX driver, check the manufacturer's website and be sure to keep on top of the latest drivers for your audio hardware as this can enhance your performance. In Windows, it's best to optimize system performance for background tasks. This reduces your latency, that's the delay between your playing and Cubase's recording of what you're playing. Just open the control panel. Let me just expand the control panel a bit and take a classic view. Double click on Performance Information and Tools. Now click on Advanced Tools. Here's the Disk Defragmenter. Windows is processing my request and requests me to click Continue if I want to proceed. And here's the Disk Defragmenter dialog window. We've got Scheduled Defragmentation enabled, and we can click Defragment now if we want to. I'll just close that window. Let's go back. Now let's take a look at optimizing system performance for background tasks. This can help reduce latency. From the classic view, let's scroll down to the system icon and double click on it to launch it. Let me just enlarge the control panel so it's a bit easier to see here. Okay, here's the system icon. Go to Advanced System Settings. Vista will prompt you to continue, so click Continue. The System Properties dialog window opens. Let's go to the Advanced tab. And in the Performance section, click the Settings button. The Performance Options dialog window opens. Go to the Advanced tab. Under Processor Scheduling, let's adjust for best performance of background services. Let's click Apply and then OK. And OK again. Close the control panel. And this concludes our overview of Windows system and hardware requirements.